If you are looking for the cheapest B660 motherboard on the market and you're wondering, is this motherboard going to hurt either my performance for gaming or is it gonna hurt my performance if I'm doing heavy workloads, then you've come to the right video where we've got the i7-12700 being tested on all these five boards here today. Now, three of these boards were sent in and the other two, I did buy them off the shelves. The cheapest in today's comparison is the B660M-E from MSI. I got this for a shade over a hundred US dollars and then followed closely by the Gigabyte B660M gaming DDR4. And then the three boards sent in, one from ASUS, that was the Prime-A. Then from ASRock, we have the Micro ATX Steel Legend and also their Pro S, which is the only full-size ATX board in today's comparison. However, three of the boards have four slots of DDR4 memory, and then the other two, the cheaper models, have the two slots of DDR4 memory. However, if you are gaming or even doing heavy workloads, two slots is generally gonna be enough where you can fit up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. However, with that aside, let's get into the testing and also go through any problems that I had with these boards and I'll keep you guys updated with my thoughts and conclusions after we go through all the numbers. Welcome back to Tech Yes City and let's get straight into the VRM torture test. And here's where I use Cinebench R23 and we run that for 10 minutes non-stop. And then towards that end of that 10 minutes, we also run it again and get the temperatures coming out of all these motherboards. And also we put up the scores so you guys can see how much performance is lost if the motherboard is throttling the i7-12700. So what we saw here straight away, we'll go through the scores with you after the 10 minute scores. And here's where the MSI-E definitely dropped a huge amount of performance and left it on the table. We're talking practically 40% drop in performance. And then we go over to the Gaming M from Gigabyte that was dropping a sizable chunk of performance. The Pro RS was throttling a little bit, and this is because it's got its BFB boost clock, which allows the CPU to use up to 125 watts all the time. However, this CPU at full throttle does want to use around 150 to 170 watts depending on the motherboard being used. And this is where the Steel Legend and the ASUS boards, they came out on top, pretty much having no throttling present when we were running these tests. Now for the single core tests, I'll also throw up the scores here and all the boards performed pretty similar, except the MSI on the single core did leave a little bit behind compared to the other four boards. However, let's look at the temperatures and what happened during these stress tests. And here is where the MSI and the Gigabyte did score pretty poorly. And that's because they were throttling and that throttling point, at least with what we're seeing from the readings here, was going pretty much near 100 degrees, meaning there's a 100 degree throttling point on these boards. And once it reaches that point, it pretty much just drops the power allowed to be consumed by the 12700 so it can essentially not damage the board's VRM. And so this is just simply a safety precaution brought in from the motherboard manufacturers so their boards don't go up in fire. However, it is funny to note that the Prime was getting up to 98 degrees on the unheat sinked top part of the motherboard. The side which has the heat sink did score roughly 20 degrees lower and the heat sink was absorbing a lot of heat, scoring over 60 degrees. However, I would like to see a Zeus definitely include a heat sink on the top of this board, and I'm sure it would be okay. Though the Pro RS from ASRock, that scored in with a solid temperature reading of around 90 degrees, and that will run fine. And then the Steel Legend just came in a different league. Of course, that is a bit of a more expensive motherboard, but we'll get onto that more or less in the conclusion. Though what we're seeing already from these tests is that the lower you go in price, the more you're going to leave on the table, especially in terms of performance, and temperatures. And also these tests were done in a 24 degree Celsius environment. So if you're living in a hotter part of the world, then it is important to note that your results will be even worse than the ones that we've seen here today. Of course, if you're in a cooler climate, you may get better results than what we're seeing also in today's video. Though the next benchmark we'll throw up for you guys is 3 Mark CPU profile. Essentially what this does is run the CPU on all threads and then it scales all the way down 
to one thread and gives you performance numbers. And what we saw across all these five boards is performance that was in the similar league to one another, meaning you're not leaving any performance on the table when it comes to gaming, at least with the 3D Mark benchmark. And I find this is pretty indicative of pretty much every game out there at the moment, is that the games won't utilize all the cores and threads, especially a CPU like the 12700, which has 12 cores and 20 threads available. So when it does come to gaming, even with a 12700 on the cheapest B660, you should be okay. But that said, there's always that chance, however small it may be, that a game in the future comes out. It's very well optimized, but it is very CPU heavy, and it uses AVX2 instruction sets, and it uses all those cores and threads. In that case, the two motherboards that performed a lot worse than the other three would drop your FPS accordingly. Then what about the onboard audio? Here's where all these boards actually use the Realtek ALC897. And I guess that's got to do with the whole supply issues in China causing Realtek to be shipping out older models that they're able to get their hands on in terms of silicon. And so what this means is that the performance might not be as good as say even a couple of generations ago when some of those motherboards had the ALC 1200 audio codec on them. However, with audio, the codec is only one part of the stage. You also need good design, trace layout, and things like capacitors to be able to support and deliver what that codec is able to do. And here's where we saw the onboard audio on all five of these motherboards was fine. If you've got a mid-range, easy to drive pair of headphones, they're gonna be absolutely fine on any of these motherboards. Where the ASUS, however, did come out on top, scoring minus 89 decibels of crosstalk and actually having, in my opinion, the best frequency response curve where it was the closest to being flat, although the other four did perform in a pretty similar league. There was nothing to point out here where one was over the top terrible, but the ASUS did perform in that bit of a league ahead of the other four. So this next part will be dedicated to taking a quick look at the BIOS and seeing if the settings are there that you would want, especially if you are new to PC gaming and you just want to put in the essential settings or even play around with things like undervolting, which I do think is very important on an i7-12700, for instance, especially if you're using that included stock cooler. And here's where all five of these boards had pretty solid biases in that you're able to undervolt the CPU if you wish to, you're able to lock in XMP profiles with ease, change memory settings, change voltages, even change the phase conditions. However, I will point out that the Gigabyte does have a bit of a confusing BIOS in the way it works. Sometimes the CPU voltage and the option to change it just wasn't there. So I'd like to see them perhaps update the BIOS to make it a little bit easier to navigate as opposed to the other three manufacturers, which did a great job. And in fact, ASRock do a phenomenal job here offering internet DHCP BIOS flashing. Essentially, if you connect this motherboard to a router that's got internet routing, it'll automatically update your BIOS for you. And you've got that option of RGB control within the BIOS itself. So you don't have to install any bloatware after you've made your changes to your RGB software. Then let's move on now to connectivity and features. And here's where ironically enough, all five of these boards have six USBs on the rear, with the exception being the Gigabyte, which has one of those USBs, a Type-C, as opposed to the rest having six Type-A ports. The Gigabyte has five Type-A ports and one Type-C. And some of these boards have 2.5 gig ethernet, and then the others have one gig ethernet. And I was doing some speed tests just on the internet here to see if there was any problems with the ethernet or the USB speed transfers, and none of them had any problems. They were all running absolutely fine on that front. Though looking closer at the boards themselves, I'd definitely give the feature set the win to the Steel Legend. It's got two USB 2 front outs, plenty of fan headers. It's got the RGB uh, connectors at the top and the bottom, as well as a USB Type-C out at the front. And then you've also got the option to add in M.2 Wi-Fi if you wish, and you get the included heatsink on the M.2 slot, at least the top slot. And also the ASUS and the Pro RS include these M.2 heat shields. So they definitely will make a difference even if you're using a PCIe Gen 3 M.2. However, if you're using a PCIe Gen 4 M.2 SSD, then you will definitely want a heatsink on that SSD as having one not on there is dangerous. Though, if you do buy an M.2 Gen 4 SSD, practically all of them do come with their own included heatsink from the get-go. So that's not so much a big deal. But even then, if you are running high-speed M.2 SSDs, I always recommend having a heatsink on them because the differences can be night and day in terms of temperatures. 
And now with all that out of the way, it's time to get on to a conclusion and my thoughts and opinions and recommendations for you guys if you wanna buy a B660 motherboard, especially one that is going to be on the budget side of things. And what I'm gonna say straight away from seeing the Gigabyte Gaming motherboard here in the MSI-E is that it doesn't matter what manufacturer you go from, if you're going with the cheapest board and just it's lacking heat sinks or it has, it's missing one of the heat sinks and the price is just very cheap, definitely check out the performance before you buy that. As in the case of these two really cheap boards here, they were coming in a little bit cheaper than the other boards, but they were dropping that performance down to levels that I wouldn't feel comfortable with running with an i7-12700. However, if you are on a budget, and I will interlude here and say that I have tested out a motherboard called the Soyo B660, and that was actually pretty impressive. And the good thing about that was, was that it was on AliExpress. So anyone in the world can buy that board and get it shipped and delivered without getting ripped off. However, when it comes to the other boards here, the Asus, the Prime, the Steel Legend, and also the Pro RS, they did a solid job of coupling with an i7-12700. And in fact, I wouldn't go with any less than either of these three boards that we tested here today. Though when it comes to the feature set and which one would I pick over the others, I would say if I had the extra money, I would go with the Steel Legend. It was extremely impressive, but ASRock with their Steel Legend design over the years have shown that this is that sort of value pick that doesn't really have any compromises, especially for the money. And that's what I saw here again today with this M Steel Legend B660. However, that said, I do like the ASUS for having the best onboard audio here today and also having very solid performance figures similar to that of the Steel Legend and nipping that out of the Pro RS. Though the Pro RS, definitely if you need the ATX size board and you need the extra expandability in terms of PCIe slots, that's gonna do a great job as well. However, me personally, if I did go with the RS, I would be undervolting my CPU, especially on a 12700, to match that 125 watt limit that ASRock have put in place on this board. As opposed to the other budget boards, even though they don't have that limit in place, they just do their own throttling anyway. Seems like the Pro RS does have its own sort of, I guess, safe limit of 125 watts that it will run day in, day out on that level. So it's not too bad of a board. Though another thing worth mentioning with the Prime is that although they don't have full-size connectivity on them, 16X, they do have 16 slot full-size slots. The top of all these motherboards obviously being a 16X, but then the bottom ports being lower than that. Though one little attention to detail that I did notice when I was testing was with the ASRock boards is that on the 1X PCIe slots, they have cut out the plastic at the ends. So you can use bigger PCIe cards with the 1X slots and still use them fine. Of course, just the data transfer rates will go down to 1X. So perhaps now we can do that video, gaming on PCIe 1X. Though the final two boards to give my thoughts and opinions on is the Gigabyte Gaming and also the MSI-E. Now, in MSI's defense, dash E, E usually means economy model. It's the cheapest of the cheap. So they're not really, I mean, if you're buying this and you're expecting this motherboard to perform miracles and run with a 12900K, then I'd say check the price again and check what models are out there and also check the fact that it has no heat sinks on the VRM. And you may see that, okay, this is coming in at that cheap price point, maybe for someone who wants to go get an i3-12100 or an i5-12400 and just wants to build a dead-end system in that they don't want to upgrade in the future. And in that case, this board will serve you perfectly fine and will save you some money. Same with the Gigabyte Gaming, but I just don't like the fact that they've got the fancy heatsink on this board. They've labeled it as, as gaming and you'd think, okay, well, I know people who will go out and buy i7-12700s thinking, okay, this, this gaming board's gonna be awesome. But in actual fact, the gaming motherboard isn't that well built and it does throttle performance. But the ironic thing about this is I'm gonna have to use this in a competition soon where I'm on a very strict budget and I've gotta get the most price performance. And in that case, I will be undervolting on this board 
and it will hopefully do the job okay with an i7-12700. So that being said, hopefully you guys have seen the results here today. You've seen the limitations, especially when it comes to price versus performance of these motherboards. And with that aside, you can make an informed decision. I would recommend going with at least the Pro RS out of these boards in the video here today, especially if you're getting an i7-12700. And if you're going with another CPU, configuration setup, then I'd definitely go and look for some other news, other information out there and see what you can find. Anyhow guys, that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button for us and also let us know in the comments section below, what do you think about these five boards here today? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, just like this question of the day here, which comes from Zoran Kesek and they ask, is it still good? And they're referring to the Ryzen 5 1600 AF gaming PC that we did a build in years ago. And definitely when it comes to the 1600 AF, it is a great CPU, great value even in 2022. It's gonna serve your needs fine, especially if you're into tuning things a little bit, maybe you can get a better cooler for it, overclock it a little bit, get some decent DDR4 memory, and it's gonna perform really well. No matter the game, just make sure though, if you are buying say a really high end graphics card and you're running it at 1080p, then there may be some other options out there, say Ryzen 5 5600X or even the i7-12700 that we tested in today's video, they may be a better choice in terms of CPU, but in terms of value, the 1600 AF is definitely hard to beat. It's one of the best value CPUs out there. Hope that answers that question. And with that aside, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye. Oh!